Hi, it's Melissa, and in this video, we'll walk through the most helpful sites, apps, and resources that you can use when planning a trip. Hi, it's Melissa here at Ready to Go, where we discuss tips and resources to help you plan your very own travels and create unforgettable memories and experiences. Now there's so much information out there when it comes to traveling that it's sometimes difficult to narrow it down in terms of what are the most reliable sources and where we should go to book hotels, flights, excursions, and so on. Throughout all my years of frequent travel and lots of trial and error, I've learned a lot in terms of the do's and don'ts of using different apps and booking sites. So what I'd like to share with you today are 15 of the resources that have been the most useful and user-friendly in my experience as well as a few new discoveries, and hopefully these will be helpful to you as well. For some of these, I'll be navigating on the website version, but all of these sites have smartphone apps that you can download. Now, because of the number of items that I'll be sharing, I've divided this into two videos, this being part one. I invite you to head over to watch part two after this one. As a note, I'd like to mention that I'm not currently sponsored by any of these platforms, and should that change in the future, I will make sure to mention it at that point. Now, by no means is this the ultimate list in terms of travel apps, and there are many more excellent ones beyond this list. So if you have any additional feedback on these sites and apps, or if you have others that you've personally found helpful or any suggestions that you'd like me to try out in the future, please write those up in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. Now let's get going. So first thing I do when planning a trip is to research the destination. Lonely Planet books are always my go-to. They often include historical information as well as cultural tips unique to that location. I like that they provide info for all budget levels of travel from backpacking to luxury and that all the information in these books is input by actual travelers and then verified by Lonely Planet. No hotel, restaurant, or tour provider can pay to be included in these books, and they do not include any advertising. So they really include unbiased info. They also update most of their editions annually, so the pricing and other detail are current. So with Lonely Planet, you have versions for countries and major cities. As examples here, I have uh, Australia, uh, as well as Amsterdam. Uh, I like to use color-coded tabs uh, as references, and uh, many of these also include uh, pull-out maps, such as this one. Uh, they also have pocket versions, such as this one for Nice and Monaco, which can be uh, very handy to carry around. Number two, flights and car rentals. This is a big category. Do we book with third-party apps such as Expedia or do we book directly with the airline or car rental company? Now, there are definitely pros when booking through a third-party app such as Expedia. It is very convenient to search and compare between airlines, especially for multi-city itineraries where you may need to use different airlines. It provides a one-stop shop for your itinerary and they offer additional discounts if you book your hotel and your car rental with them as well. Now, they do get a bulk discount, so prices may sometimes be cheaper than booking direct. Personally, I like to compare what I find on Expedia and on each airline's app, but unless there is a very significant savings or that I have a multi-city itinerary, I will always book directly with the airline. Two main reasons for this. First, the price may be cheaper, but the terms may be different. So specifically, please pay attention to cancellation policies and change fees. Two, given all the recent issues uh, with airline travel, extensive delays and flight cancellations around the world, mainly due to staffing shortages, it's best to book directly with the airline as it will provide you with the quickest and most reliable avenue to resolve these issues. If you book with a third-party app, you're basically working with a middleman and you will have to deal with their customer service rather than directly with the airline. This is important. If you've booked via a third-party site and you call the airline and they will redirect you to the third-party service and you risk not getting the same level of resolution. 
Now, the exact same principle applies to car rentals, book direct, and I strongly recommend using only well-known and reputable brands such as Avis, Alamo, Hertz. Uh, in Europe, Sixth uh, is actually excellent. I booked only twice with what I'll call no-name or low-end brands, and prices uh, were very cheap. Uh, I thought I was the cleverest deal finder and I had issues both times. And one of those times, I didn't even get a car. Uh, they had run out of cars. So they literally walked me over to another car rental company where I had to pay again. Long story short, it took me six months to get my money back. These guys were definitely not ready to go. Now, always remember to download airline and car rental apps to your phone once booked as you will be able to get notifications in case of changes and also to make changes to your bookings, do your check-in and access your boarding passes. Number three, Rome to Rio app. I use this one mainly to look for options on how to get between cities and to find out the best ways to get from point A to point B within a city. In this example, in Paris, we wanna go from the Eiffel Tower to the Louvre Museum and they give us three options, bus, taxi, or walking, as well as the estimated cost. Number four, hotels. Now for hotels, I really like to leverage reward points as these are the easiest freebies to get when traveling. The main program I adhere to is Marriott Bonvoy because they currently hold 34 hotel brands within their portfolio, and it's very easy to accumulate points with them via the American Express Bonvoy card. This card is available in the US, in Canada, and the UK. Not sure if it's yet available in other countries. Now, I use this as my main card, and I've reached a certain level in the Bonvoy loyalty program. So at this point, these rewards cover well over 50% of our hotel stays. The other app I use is Hotels.com. I find it to be user-friendly, and they have a broad selection of hotel options. I like that you see the guest rating as well as the full price, including taxes, right on the search results. Visually, I just find it to be very clear. This year in 2023, there's actually a new rewards program called One Key, which combines rewards from Expedia, Hotels.com, and Verbo. This is very new, so I cannot give any feedback on it yet but it's in essence a cash-based rewards program where you earn 2% back on lodging activities, packages, and car rentals, while flight purchases receive a 0.2% back. Current rewards programs for Expedia and Hotels.com will be transitioned to one key uh, this month in July 2023, but the details are not yet clear, so we'll do a review of this new program at a later date. Number five, apartment rentals. Now the two main apps out there are Airbnb and Verbo. I personally use Airbnb as I've been a member for 11 years and I've accumulated uh, good reviews as a guest. So I tend to receive responses a lot quicker from the hosts. Airbnb also have a lot more active properties when you compare the searches with Verbo, though of course this may change in the future. Now, Airbnb also offers an instant book option on certain properties, which makes the process a lot quicker. Also, for people looking to rent rooms rather than an entire property, this is an option that is available on Airbnb, but not on Verbo. It's very important to read reviews and to adjust your settings to ensure you're selecting the type of accommodation you're looking for, whether this be a single room or an entire apartment or house. Now, I am curious to know, for those of you who have used Verbo, what was your experience like and would you use it again? Please indicate that in the comments below. Number six, activities and excursions. Now, Viator has been my go-to for booking excursions for well over 10 years. I especially like that it allows you to set your preferred currency in your profile and to create wish lists. In future videos where I talk about excursions that I book through Viator, I'll be including those links in the description of those videos so you'll be able to book the very same ones as well if interested. Number seven, daypassapp.com. This one is pretty cool. Say you're in a city and you've got some downtime or you just want to spend a day uh, at the pool of a hotel that may be very expensive to book as an accommodation, you can get a day pass for those facilities. In this example, we search for Miami Beach and we see that the SLS Hotel, for instance, offers a day pass to their pool from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
Okay, so this is the end of part one of my list of key travel resources and apps. Hope you're enjoying it thus far. If so, please ensure to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell so you never miss out on any new content. And remember to click here to see part two of this list.